students and welcome to Gray's Trains. My name is Gray and this is my train. Ooh, can't work out my hands. So today we're going on another little jolly jaunt, uh, this time with the digital traction uh, Churchwood Mogul. Uh, we're driving on the Steam Sound Supreme High Wycombe and Joint Line route, which is available for free on Steam Sound Supreme. And we're going to be running a stopping passenger train from Banbury to Oxford. So, yeah, I like this engine. I like the route quite a bit. You know what? I'm going to change the buffers. This is something I do like about the Churchill Mogul, is that you can change the buffers just by pressing Shift-B. And we've got the parallel type. And I thought I'd do something with a bit of snow, uh, just for a little bit of visual difference. Visual difference, I'm not even speaking English today. Very nice. So this route, it's um, been a Steam Sound Supreme project for quite a few years now. I've got the original version as well. Um, and it's genu genuinely a very good route, um, especially given that you pay nothing for it. As, as I said, this is a free route. do require some um, payware uh, content in order to make it work properly. For example, you need West Somerset, you need Falmouth, I think you need um, Port Road or West Coast, uh, Western Lines of Scotland or other things as well. Um, there is a full list of requirements um, in the manual. But as I said, it's a free route uh, with custom made assets um, and it comes with a wide variety of scenarios as well. And what do you get for zero pounds, zero pence? Well. All of that basically. So it's a very big route um, for no money and it's great western region so I know a lot of people will be quite happy about that anyway. Because loads of people love the great western. I'm impartial. Um, I like the great I like great western locos. I do. I love this. I love the Church of Mogul. I always find myself driving this at some stage or another. Uh, because it doesn't impact on frames, it sounds good, um, and I think it is genuinely one of the best items of DLC that Digital Traction have come up with in recent years. It's a very nice engine, very nice to drive, and it's, uh, as I said, the sounds are just brilliant. We're going to have to deal with a lot of this, folks, I'm afraid. We're going to have to deal with a lot of frame rate drops. Uh, just because this is such a big route and it is quite intensive on the old graphics. The engine itself, flawless. I love the engine. Uh, I like it so much that this engine is called Jack. This is my Jack of all trades. That's what I like to refer to him as. He's my Jack of all trades. So we're just coming into Banbury now. Yeah, something else I quite like as well is that those wagons there, they're just scenic items just plonked on top of the rails. And, oh, we can even see the subject of a previous video. There's the uh, Sound Supreme Wing Cutters pack. There they are. Lovely. Okay, I think that's enough coal in the fire. do with more brakes. More brakes please. Bambury. 
Now this is technically a um, uh, technically an LNER station. I'm not sure in what way. I presume there's a possible connection with the Great Central. Okay. Um, oh. Platform doesn't work. It ju it just don't work. It, it it don't work. It's it's um, yeah it. It doesn't work. Uh, so, release the brakes. Away we go. Away we go on our little pleasure jaunt with my jack of all trades. Really lovely engine, these. Um, there's a couple of them in preservation. And. Yeah, they're just handsome. To the extreme. Very handsome, very purposeful engine. Uh, they were very versatile. Uh, introduced. Uh, well, they were designed by George Jackson Churchwood, as a subject of the Great Western Railway, following a trip to America. Now, Churchwood was a pretty good designer in one aspect, in that he used to explore the world, find uh, ideas that he hadn't come up with yet, or no British designer had come up with yet, and then he'd imply them. Um, he'd put them into his own locomotives. So, the mobile wheel arrangement uh, was American. So. This was the way he worked. So, for example, he got his design for the Mogul from American designs. He got a bogey design from France. Um, and, yeah, that's the sort of level we're talking with with Churchwood. He used to go across the world and just uh, find practices and uh, other little bits of railway design that um, haven't really been thought of before. And then he didn't put them into the Great Central, uh, not Great Central, Great Western Railway. Basically, the whole plan with this is that we're just going to uh, drive along here and um, run an all-stop service, so all stopping from Banbury to Oxford. And as I've warned, the frames might get very dodgy. Coaches. Uh, the coaches are the Collet Sunshines that come with Riviera 50s which are very good, because they actually sound like real coaches. Which is always nice. I think Riviera 50s is another requirement for this route. I'm not sure if I mentioned that yet. Quite a few requirements for the route, as I said, but... Um, honestly, they all, they all have their part to play in the, the way the route is... the way the route looks. And acts. Uh, like for example there's working water troughs uh, on this route um, and yeah there's loads of operation uh, operational interests on here you've got quarries you've got yards stations there's even the Morris uh, car factory at Cowley which for me is a car guy eee, that's pretty cool and you've got these sidings there as well um, it's just brilliant. It really is. It's awesome. I'm just hearing the sound of this engine running up now to 50 miles an hour. Right, so that looks like a first stop there, King Sutton. Hold on the fire, I think. 
think. There are only really a couple of things that let this engine down, I think. One is that it doesn't have an operational tender scoop, which, given that this engine was, uh, came out um, it's around, at around about the same time that Riviera 50s came out, um, is a bit of a shame. I mean, Victory Works, I think Victory Works did have something to play with the water with the water troughs in game because the Peppercorn K1 which I, which I do believe came out before this did I think it did uh, in 2015 uh, that has an operational tender scoop I will cover the um, the K1 at some point because that's a brilliant engine um, I think it's my most played item of DLC at least officially according to Steam apparently Right, we got to start braking. Should have started braking earlier, but I'll be too busy talking. Cab, really well done. It looks very, very nice. Very nice cab in this. Um, Okay, we're slowing down quite sufficiently, I think. Just ease off the brakes now. So we're just rolling up to the station. And that's enough coal, I think. get a lot of this uh, as it was as it was with the Great Central route where you got a load of signals which display danger. Now let's just hope that this platform works. coaches into the platform. It's going to turn out that this platform doesn't work either. <sighs> I hate being right all the time. I really do. Ah. So that platform doesn't work either. Would it be nice if we actually had simulated wheel slip? That would be nice, but um, alas, we don't have it on this engine. Off we go. Mm. Nice, refreshing um, supermarket supermarket own brand cola. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. So I'm probably going to finish this with a load of SPAD reports. Uh, depends where if I remember to request to pass all the signals at danger. Now 
Now, occasionally, when you load up a quick drive on this route, sometimes uh, some AI traffic will come out to greet you. Not today, apparently. Not today. Oh. <clears throat> this wasn't actually what I had planned for this video. Um, for this jolly jaunt, I was thinking about uh, giving the Exeter Kingsway King a spin. Um, given that it's an engine that a lot of people struggle to drive, uh, struggle to uh, get to grips with um, in terms of driving it, but. Uh, I'm actually. I can actually drive it. I can drive it. It's by no means perfect. By no means is it perfect. And you can see that we're just coming up to the functioning water troughs. I think that the thing that really changed the game was when Train Simulator 2016 came out with the Riv Riviera 50s with water, uh, with working water troughs. They just add another area of operational interest onto a route. And it's... Yeah, it is genuinely something which I wish I could demonstrate with this. I can't um, if I had the Riviera 50s King, and I could have. Annoyingly, the troughs aren't used to the full potential on here or Riviera 50s. Uh, because they are too close to the end of a route. So, for example, we've got those troughs there. Right, so we've got those troughs there they are. Right, and if we scroll out. There's the end of the route there. Which is a shame. We've got to slow down for the station up here. That is if it works. We'll see if it works in a bit. This is something I quite like, is the fact that um, the brakes they work with an injector. Uh, the injector is something in real life that generally manages the brakes. So um, you've got your normal brake handle, which is pretty much for application purposes. Um, the injector is used to uh, release or to maintain a running position, unless it's um, an LMS combination brake, in which case uh, that's uh, you know, that does uh, both jobs. Um, it applies and releases and can hold a running position. As we'll find out when I eventually give the G2 a go as well. And I'll just have a little fire and I've got to stop. Is this going to work? It works! It works! Oh my word, we've actually found a working platform. Well, mostly working platform anyway. Apologies if you can hear my housemates. There's 
not an awful lot I can do about it, unfortunately. Where we go? On Jack, my Jack of all trades. Let's go for a nice line side shot. Yeah, another thing I'll say about this engine is that it's deceivably powerful. Um, it does deceive here a little bit because I've actually tried recreating um, a photograph from a book uh, somewhere. Uh, but me, forever the professional, I've forgotten to get the book out already. But um, in a book, I've got a picture. Well, there's a picture of. Uh, 6365, I think it is, on a um, Torquay to Plymouth Express uh, running over Dawlish. So I thought, okay, what I'll do is I'll try and recreate the photograph. So I had to run it with 12 coaches from Torquay to Plymouth, well, to Exeter anyway. And I was amazed with the fact that the engine was not only able to pull 12 coaches, but it was also able to do it at 70 miles an hour in places. I was quite frankly staggered, because I always describe this engine as a nice trundling engine. It's a nice engine to drive around in if you're just going to have a little trundle. So, you know, not going particularly fast, so pretty much the speeds we're doing now, so we're currently doing about 50 miles an hour. But, um, yeah, it's a nice engine to drive, really nice engine to drive. Um, if I would recommend uh, a lo like something for people to buy as like one of their first items of third-party DLC, so as in something that isn't made by DTG, um, or formerly RSC, I would definitely say this. And, oh no, we were, see, we were going so fast there. I forgot we've got a station stop right there. Oh, can we stop in time? Can we stop in time? Oh, I think we actually managed that quite well. Or should I say Jack has managed that quite well. <laughs> Particles aren't too laggy on this engine either. It's very nice. Hold on. I think you can tell already this platform's not going to work. 
will stop anyway because I said that this is a stopping train. And by darn it, we're going to stop here. Oh, well, they've got the little passenger thingy. You guys can't see it, probably, because I've hidden the, um, the mouse. That's our second working platform. Oh my golly gosh. I am shocked. I'm very shocked. Oh. Wait, hold on, wait, what? Oh my god! They're walking through the ground. Oh my god! I keep finding these glitches and trains them. They don't half make me giggle when I find them. Jack, come on. This is the thing, once you get the knack of firing this engine, it is possible to just drive around the whole down the whole route or a whole journey literally um, with the engine blowing off constantly. Once you get the knack of it, it's a very easy engine to fire. It's very good at fire. Um, very nice to fire actually. Very, very nice to fire. to go on the next notch up there at the moment because if you look at my generation rate my generation rate is looking quite generous at the moment it's a generous generation rate disappointed we haven't come across any AI traffic yet because there is the AI traffic does occasionally materialize um, when you're doing quick drives on here uh, I like it when you I think that AI traffic is very important to have in a quick drive anyway because it adds another dimension to the whole thing little scene going on here. Church with Church with Mogul dashing through the snow. Could even argue they were recreating the winter of 1963. At the time of recording though it's um, just coming into summer. Oh well there we go then. <laughs> station coming up. Distant. So we'll go down to 13 inches, I think. It's a little bit excessive. Um, I think that's a number of uh, real loco drivers. They genuinely um, 
bring the uh, the brake vacuum down to 18 and that's what helps bring it to a stop quite nice and gently. I'm not quite sure about Great Western engines because most engines, um, the maximum amount of vacuum you can have in uh, most steam engines is 21 inches of vacuum, uh, whereas Great Western engines they run at 25 inches. So I should explain about vacuum brakes as well, how vacuum brakes work. Um, well, the idea is that the reason why you use vacuum. Um, is that it provides a very good sort of emergency system where basically all of the coach although I'll wait till I stop before I explain this because this is going to require more concentration I think Pulling in now. Okay. And apply again. Another working platform. So anyway, um, vacuum brakes. How do they work? Well, well, why vacuum brakes? First of all, it makes uh, a vet. No, oh, even though it's not connected. We'll, we'll gloss over that. Gloss over that. But yeah, um, the reason why you'd use vacuum uh, in your brake system is that should there be a breakaway, which is very popular. Uh, popular, very common with uh, British three-link couplings such as that. Um, and if it breaks away, it comes with a hose as well. Now you rely on the vacuum to keep the brakes off. So you're basically almost sucking the brakes off. That's what you do. That's a bad choice of words. But Basically, a vacuum is a suction. So when you go, you're creating a vacuum effectively because you're sucking something, um, like a vacuum, you know, a Hoover is a vacuum cleaner. So that's what's keeping the brakes off. Now, once there is a brake in the fuel, uh, in the brake lines rather, there's no more vacuum being supplied to the rolling stock. There's no more, uh, there's no more uh, vacuum being supplied there to keep the brakes off. So of course the brakes then apply, um, and then thus bring the stock that's broken away to a controlled halt. At least I presume controlled. I'm not sure, but that's the theory behind it. Um, and it's actually a fairly decent uh, safety device, and oh, just notice. Got, got motion in between the frames. Stevenson Link, I think. It's a Stevenson Link on um, these engines. Collett's designed locomotives um, used uh, wool shards valve gear. Um, all internal. Wool shards is uh, effectively simplified Stevenson's. That's the best way to look at it. Now, modern trains with air brakes, if we're going to talk about brakes, modern trains use air brakes and it's the same sort of principle where it basically feeds a continuous supply of air into the brake cylinders on the train and how the brakes apply, what you're doing is you're Take it, uh, you're taking air away from the system, you're allowing the air to escape, thus the brakes start to apply. And in the same case, if you have a breakaway, uh, because there's no air being supplied to the brakes, they apply. 
Um, and with the steam locomotive, with well, with all the brake designs that use vacuum, you're effectively obliterating the vacuum. You're pumping air into the system to uh, take away from the vacuum, and thus the brakes apply. Which is a, it's actually it's a very odd way of thinking about it. The fact that in order for the the brakes to release, you need to take all the air out of the system. Which is very interesting when you think about it. Great Western engines, I mean, if you hear that sort of noise as we're going along, Vic, um, Great Western locomotives have a vacuum pump, uh, which I can't actually find on this. But there is a vacuum pump somewhere on this engine which is driven by the wheels. And when you drive some uh, advanced Great Western locomotives, you'll actually find that that vacuum pump, the faster you go, it can actually keep on top of the brakes and keep uh, a vacuum in the system. And so you end up with the brakes released. Thus, you don't require the ejector and therefore you save steam, basically talking the ejector, I needed to turn that off, but now it, so that means I can apply the brakes now. So what we're doing now is we're opening the valve, which is obliterating the vacuum in the system, and thus applying the brakes and uh, slowly bringing the train to a halt. This is a very short station. This is very, very, very small. So, I'm not even sure if the station is worth bothering with, to be honest. Looks more like a halt. Well, we'll stop here anyway, whether the passengers like it or not, or whether the locals like it or not. I don't care. I'm only driving the train. Right. Application. Oh my word, that really isn't worth bothering with at all, is it? Sod it. If I don't overrun. Okay, now I'll either take it as this. I've stopped in the wrong place. So either one coach has underrun or the other's overrun, or that nobody wants to get out. I'm going to take it that nobody wants to get out. And there's no one to get on, so... Yeah, sod it. Got a little bit of echo there. Just a little bit. So you listeners, we're moving off, you'll hear the noise going on. Just about hear it there. Ooh, you get to look at my hair. There was actually quite a bit of technology in the steam engine. Quite a fair bit. And when you look at the back head, if you understand it, it's... Oh! Steam heating! No! No! I did not notice that about this engine before. I'm going to have to try this out with the Matrix Strange Teaks at some point. That was a steam heating valve. And there are some items of the DLC where if you turn the steam heating valve on, what you'll do, what, what you'll see, is steam seeping out from under the coaches with the steam heating valve on. And I really hope that's the case with this engine. I really do. I just hope to God that wasn't cosmetic. That wasn't a cosmetic twirly thingy. So whatever we've got. Uh, that's the exhaust in, in, uh, injector there. That's live. 
that's a brake ejector. There's a brake handle, and so that's our train brake, and that little lever that's attached to it, that's our ejector. Uh, that there is our blower, so that causes a draft within the boiler. So when we're stationary or going through a tunnel that produces a draft, uh, keeps the fire up. Uh, that one beneath it doesn't do anything. It's been modelled in, but doesn't do anything. That's our regulator there, that big red lever. So what that does is that that's our throttle, basically. This is our reverser, or gear lever, if you prefer to look at it like that. Um, this lever here, that drops sand onto the rails, uh, which helps with adhesion. That there is uh, the cylinder cock, so that's our drainage mechanism for the cylinders, which I've mentioned before, why they're important. And I've just realised we've actually overfilled with water. Right, so getting to slow down, so I'll do this in the cab. You can see exactly what I'm doing. Okay, it's on running because the ejector is closed. And now I need to turn off the water, stop filling the water, because as you can see, we've overfilled the boiler. So what we do, we turn off the injector. I was really expecting something to twirl there. Oh well. And then we need to close our water. Which is somewhere. Open the injector just to take the, um, the brakes off because we're in danger of underrunning the platform. Go to this side. So we'll be able to see a little bit better. Right, our brakes have completely released, so we close the ejector. Saves wasting steam. Okay, and the brakes on again. Just double check the injector water is closed, it has. But yeah, that's the fundamentals of driving a steam engine. Obviously I know that driving one in real life would be more difficult than in game, because in game it's a bit simplified, but um, and of course the physics are different. The way that an engine really works will be different to this. Oh, that's interesting. They haven't finished lining the, the bridge. Oh well. Right, off we go. Ooh. So, we open up the regulator, like so. To get the engine to move off. Not sort of reverse it back. Because notching the reverse it back is the steam engine equivalent of changing gear. So what we're doing is that, like in the, with the car, you change up a gear to reduce the amount of revs that you're using. What we do with a steam engine is that we notch it back to reduce how much steam we're using. That's the fundamentals of a steam engine. Mason's valve, what's that do? Oh, 
I can rotate it, but I don't know what it does. <laughs> I don't know what it does. I've had this engine for a couple of years now. I did not know that you can twiddle a thing called a mason's valve. Oh, there's a signalman. Hello, Mr. Signalman. Goodbye, Mr. Signalman. Seven miles to Oxford. And you know what? I've actually really enjoyed doing this little drive and showing off how a steam engine actually works, how to control a steam engine. And so, you mu well, you probably didn't hear this in the first episode because, of course, the audio levels were terrible. But something I don't like when it comes to railway locomotives is how people say, oh, they work just like a kettle. No, they don't. Steam is a gas. It's an invisible gas, um, which is a byproduct of superheated water vapour. Which is, I mean, the stuff that you see coming out the chimney, well, out the safety valve, um, so that brass thing there, right? The thing that you see there, that is water vapour. So it comes out as steam, but as it cools, it condenses and becomes water vapour. Right, but steadily come and there. I wish I could speak. Uh, so we're gradually coming up to our next stop. So. Right, so we're going to go down to 18 inches. Oh, 17.6, same thing really. You can see that our speed is now dropping. So we just sit here and allow the engine to slow down gradually on its own accord. Okay, we've cut coming up a little bit quicker than I expected, so we'll drop that down, we'll drop that down to 14 inches. Then 11. Then none. <laughs> you can hear that noise. That's the vacuum pump. Which, when we're running at uh, speed, keeps the brakes off for us. Even though it's not simulated on this. There are some locos in Train Simulator where they do have a simulated vacuum pump. We might have over a bit. Ah, oh, literally, literally a door, a door. That's gotten. And I'm getting very unusual uh, lag spikes here. Oh. I'd have been even more pissed off if the platform <laughs> didn't work. Very lot of frame rate drops. Very odd. This hasn't really happened to me before, will it, mate? Let's get the brakes released for when we go. Send the guard uh, a little whistle to the guard. And just a general starting whistle. Very odd frame rate drops I'm getting. I do apologise for this, but as I've said before, it's not an awful lot I can do about that at the moment. I'm saying that though, now with my new job, um, I could look into upgrading the PC uh, sooner rather than later, which would be great. And I can also start uh, saving up for a car, 
and um, I might do some videos along that uh, to do with that. So you'll see. You never know. You never know. That's water vapour, that's not steam. That's why it's called a vaporizer. Because it just turns it into vapour. <laughs> Train rain drops make me sad. They make me very sad. Mm. I've done this creep. How far how long have we got to Oxford? Five miles. We're taking our time with this folks. When we get into Oxford, the frames are going to get so much worse. I can sense it. <laughs> They're going to get so bad. engine, I mean, the textures are very good on it. They're very good. They look better in dynamic lighting, obviously. Um, but the lining... Mm, the lining hasn't fared so well. And of course the decal textures. I don't know why some, lo some um, locos look like this, where the textures, like the, the decals, why on some instances they're really dark especially when there's a light source on them because okay so we're on here look there's our light source up in ah uh, no it's not a dump file it's not a dump file yes Okay, there we go. So, you see our... So, there's our light source here, and it's coming on to this side of the engine. And even though I haven't got dynamic lighting, at least it's still highlighting that this side is lit, but unfortunately what ruins it is the fact that the decal pieces are dark. They're a lot darker than they should be. Like, if we look on this side, you can see that they're pretty much the colour they should be. Those sort of shenanigans make me a sad circle. Very sad circle. Turn the injectors off. I'm not going to overfill the boiler this time. No, 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 no. Even though on this engine it's not simulated, the priming isn't simulated, it's still good practice just not to overfill the boiler. Still good practice, I think. <laughs> Why is my frame so poo? <laughs> My frames are so poo, it's unbelievable. Eee, there we go. <laughs> they make me a sad circle. They make me a very sad circle. I'm gonna vape sadly. <laughs> Sad Merp. <laughs> this is why I can never win a race because everybody's, you know, we start a race and everybody's finished and there's me being attacked by the lag. Ah. And there's another decal I've just noticed on here, which is the uh, weight and power class restriction the Great Western have, where it's little circular dot with a, um, a letter in it, so this is a blue D. Uh, 
sure what that I'm not sure what that strictly means, um, but I do know that that's uh, a quick code that they came up with to identify a locomotive's um, weight and its power classification. So. I might do some more research into it and maybe when I next take a look at Great Western Engine I can explain uh, a little bit on how that works. But I don't want to be boring. I don't want to be boring. If I'm boring... Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, as always, what I say when I, whenever I do these videos is that if you guys have uh, suggestions for me to do... DLC permitting, of course, whether I've got the DLC or whether the DLC is actually available, um, then I will take a little look-see at it. So if there's a route you want to see me have a go on, uh, a particular engine you want to see me get to grasp, uh, get my, you know, get to grasp with, or even just rolling stock you want me to have a little look at, um, then put in the comments what you want me to do, um, and I'll have a little go and I'll, I'll show you guys the result of it. Same with scenario creation. I'm really taking scenario creation into my stride recently. <coughs> oh, pardon me. I've taken scenario creation into my stride recently. And I really enjoy making scenarios. I can come up with scenarios pretty damn quickly. Um, and I'm learning all the techniques of them. I've still got to get to grasps with a cinematic camera and making career-based scenarios. Um, but all in all, I find them great fun because I'm coming up with something which... Um, the developers haven't done. May as well go in the cab because then at least we won't notice the terrible frames. The terrible frames are in the single figures right now. And we've just hit 60 miles an hour. I think we're on the approach into Oxford. We are. So we're nearly done. I did I did warn that the frames were going to get terrible as soon as we got into Oxford, didn't I? Here's the coaches. Ah, oh, that's nice. And, um... Oh, we can't twiddle with that. And we can sit on this side. We can sit on this side. We have a choice of sides to sit. So we'll coast. We'll coast there. There's no need to really use any steam. It would be nice if the frames weren't poo. I will admit, this is pretty intolerable to watch. I wouldn't be surprised if I got loads of angry comments saying, well, your frames are shit, your frames are shit, you are shit, everything is shit. I, I honestly don't mind what you guys say. As I said, there's not an awful lot I can do about the frame rate problems anymore. At the moment, rather, not anymore. The problem with this game is that it uses what's known as a tile loading system. So it doesn't just load up the route in one big lump. Uh, what it does is that as you're driving along it loads uh, another tile of scenery uh, and terrain and whatnot. And that's what's causing the frame rate drops because of course it's taking processing power out of uh, the thing. Right, what I'll do is I'll take the vacuum down to 20 inches. That means we can slow down for this 40 limit coming up, and then hopefully even slow down for the 25 limit that comes up after that. But you can also hear that the frame rate drops are impacting on my audio as well. So you can hear that that vacuum pump audio, that's running in with the rotation of the wheels, so the speed of the engine, and you can hear how it's getting choppier getting choppier as the frame rates are getting worse and that's why I like uh, I prefer engines like this where the exhaust noise 
when you get above 20 miles an hour, it's um, a recording. So there's a recording of the engine running at speed. Not only does it sound better, but when I'm getting frame rate drops, um, the lack in sound quality is uh, not noticeable. Uh oh. No, no. Ah, we're speeding. We've committed the worst crime in the world. <laughs> right, let's open that. Take up 20. There we go. So we can keep slowing down for this 25 limit at least. This is the thing. I've already did a little scout of this on the map and saw and seen that there was no, like, uh, spawned consists or trains uh, at this part of, at this part of the line, but you can still see that just by the amount of scenery here, it's impacted on my frames a lot. Right. Oh, there we go. It's not a uh, signal drop for me. That's that's very. Of it. That's a good signal, good signal. You actually work all right. Oh, but don't tell me I'm going to end up speeding again. Oh no. But this is us just rolling into our final stop anyway, so um, I don't mind that we've only got frame rate problems here. I don't mind because I expected we were going to have frame rate problems here, to be honest. So I will just slow down a little bit. Open the ejector just to. Put more vacuum in the system. And we just roll on in. And. Right, and I've just realised I have had the fire. That was not particularly important at this stage. And there we go. That is the end of our jolly jaunt on the Wickham and Joint Line with the digital tractions. Uh, yeah, digital traction 4300 mogul so thank you very much for watching guys uh, I hope you enjoyed it uh, enjoyed this video and again if you like this video give it a like um, if you want to see more give me a subscribe I'm not forcing you to at all if you have a suggestion put it down in the comments or you just want to give me some feedback again put it in the comments they're all appreciated so guys thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again soon for another exciting edition of Grey's Trains Toodly Pipsky